Welcome back to chapter four with forces and Newton's laws of motion. In this shorter video, we are going to introduce the key equation for all of chapter four. One of the biggest reasons why students often report that they feel like there's this abrupt shift from chapters two and three to chapters four and five is because there is a lot of changes to how the problems um, are difficult. In chapter two and three, a lot of the time students struggle with rephrasing the question so that they know which of the many different equations we're using. In chapters four and five, there is only one real equation that we're using, the one that we're going to introduce in this video, and the difficulty comes from vector addition and making sure that we've counted all of the forces and that they're all pointing in the right direction. So we'll see that in action uh, soon, and we are going to see some small examples in this video, uh, but the example problems when we get to them uh, will really highlight the differences. Okay. So Newton's second law is what we're focusing this whole um, video on. And Newton's second law is an equation. In words, this equation tells us that the total of all the vector forces on an object is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. We have been working with acceleration since chapter two. We introduced the idea of mass in the previous lecture video for this chapter, although we have started to see it in the lab component of this course as well. And although forces are new to this chapter, the idea of vectors is one that we started building in chapter three. Now we could write kilograms times meters per second squared all over the place on our assignments, but to save us some time and effort, we have a unit of force called the Newton that will simplify just to the letter N. So one Newton, by definition, is one kilogram times meter per second squared. It is a standard unit that is just built of several other smaller standard units. Now, in the imperial system that we use here in the US, our everyday force unit is the pound. One Newton is a small fraction of a pound, 0 0.224, uh, 225 pounds. And we could also write as uh, 4.45 newtons is equal to one pound. These unit conversions will be available to us as we're doing problems. They would be given to us for any tests or exam. We don't have to memorize them, but we do need to recognize that pounds are a comparable unit to newtons. Pounds aren't actually a comparable unit to kilograms. Kilograms measures mass. Newtons measures pound, uh, Newtons and pounds measure weight or force. Okay. So our first small example, and this one we're going to do on the slide here, but I do want you, we've seen this a couple of times in earlier chapters. I do want you to pause the video when you, uh, if you're able to, and try to work the problem on your own first. It's what we do when we're on campus. Let's say that we had a two kilogram mass and we're pushing sideways on it with a nine Newton force. We're gonna ignore friction. We have a really, really smooth table. In that situation, we wanna find the acceleration. So pause the video and try to see if we are feeling comfortable with where numbers should be put into this new equation that we have. Okay. So our equation's at the top of the slide. Nine Newtons is the force. Two kilograms is the mass, and so we have to solve for the unknown acceleration. We can divide both sides by two kilograms, and the acceleration will come out to be 4.5 meters per second squared. And again, if you're not quite sure where newtons per kilogram magically turns into meters per second squared, if we go back to the previous slide, it comes from the definition of what a newton actually is. So, we can continue to use the acceleration units that we've been used to. We just need to recognize that Newton's kind of behind the scenes have that as part of the unit. All right, a second question for us. This is one that we will see several different times. It's a combination of our chapter two understanding and our chapter four understanding. Let's say that with a baseball bat or a glove, we stop a 0.15 kilogram baseball that was traveling 30 meters per second at us, 
and we stop it in a time of 4 milliseconds, 0 0.004 seconds. What's the average force that we applied during that short time period? So pause the video and think through it if you have the ability to. All right. So we can start with our understanding that if there's a lot of numbers in the problem, a really useful thing to keep our thoughts organized is to make a list of the given information. We have the mass, we have the initial velocity, we have the final velocity, and we have the elapsed time t. A lot of this is starting to look like things we had back in chapter two. We can't find the force in a single step, but we can find the acceleration. So the chapter two part of this is that we would find the acceleration using the definition of it, final velocity minus initial velocity over the time, and we get an acceleration of negative 7,500 meters per second squared. A baseball bat is able to stop things in an extremely fast um, rate, something a car would not be able to do, for example. Now that we have the acceleration, now we can turn to our chapter four understanding we would find the force using F net equals MA, so the mass times the acceleration, we would have to apply a force of 1,125 newtons, we can round that, opposite the direction of motion. That's where that negative sign comes from. We basically have to push on the baseball with the bat in order to slow it down and stop it. All right. A third example for us, and I'm going through these kind of quick because we do have the ability to re-watch these videos or pause them, and so you can make the pacing as fit your needs. A filing cabinet has a mass of 50 kilograms. I push it sideways with a force of 200 newtons, and friction acts against the motion with a 170 newton force. What is the acceleration of the cabinet in this case? Now that we have two forces given to us in a problem, we should start to train ourselves to draw a free body diagram. We wanna draw a picture where the forces are pointing in the appropriate directions. And really we care about them relative to the motion. So let's say that the filing cabinet is moving to the right on our page. We would want our push to also point to the right and we would want friction to point in the opposite direction, 170 Newtons. So the idea of vector addition is that because these are pointing in opposite directions, we have to subtract one from the other. Opposite directions means opposite sign. Same direction means same sign. So the total force, F net, would be 200 minus 170. That would be 30 newtons here. And then using our equation, because it's gonna show up every single example we do in chapter four, F net equals MA, to solve for the unknown acceleration, we would divide both sides by that 50 kilogram mass, and we get an acceleration of 0.6 meters per second squared. All right, we have a different filing cabinet this time. It has a mass of 40 kilograms. I push it sideways, and after a few seconds, I'm now measuring that my force is a steady 150 newtons, and the cabinet is moving forward at a steady rate of 1.3 meters per second. What would the friction force be while it is moving at that constant velocity? Pause the video and give yourself as much time as you need to. I want you to try to answer this question before we reveal the results. All right, there's a big note here at the bottom. Let's think back to Newton's first law. This next sentence that I've got bolded on the slide is really important for us to understand and maybe even put in all caps highlighted into our notebooks. Constant velocity, we have to train our brain that that means zero acceleration. It's not changing and so the acceleration is zero while it is moving. Now with Newton's first law, if the acceleration is zero, then the net force has to be zero also. So if we look at our free body diagram, I'm pushing in one direction, friction is pushing against my uh, attempts in the other direction, the total force has to be zero if we aren't accelerating. So if the total force is zero, then friction has matched what I'm pushing with, and it's equal and opposite 150 newtons pointing against the motion. All right, 
So kind of a quick fire set of small examples. These are all much smaller scale than the full chapter four problems we're going to see in a little bit. But they do highlight some of the key concepts are surrounding the equation that we've just learned, F net equals MA. So I will see you in upcoming videos that go through uh, Newton's third law, and then we finally get to all of those example problems that we will have separate videos for. I will see you in those next videos.